Hello, this is Mr. Huber. In this lesson, we're going to learn about solving systems of equations with elimination by multiplying one or both of the equations first before we can eliminate. It's not always possible to eliminate one of the variables. The coefficients in front of x or y might not be the same value, even if they're the opposites. We might not have a 2x and a 2x or a 2x and a negative 2x. So when that happens and neither variable will eliminate, we can multiply either one or both of the equations by any number we want. As long as we multiply both sides of an equation, we can do that. It keeps the equation equal to what we started with. And we want to multiply by something that will allow us to then eliminate a variable by adding or subtracting the equations. So a couple things to remember when we're doing elimination. We want to arrange the equations so that the like terms are on the same side of the equal sign in the same order. So we've got the x's and y's lined up and the constant terms lined up. So we're combining those like terms when we add or subtract. And then if we multiply the equations, so one of the variables will eliminate by then adding or subtracting. And if the coefficients are the same sign, remember to subtract. If they're opposite signs, add. And we're going to talk about a way that we can multiply to get it to be addition each time, because that's generally pretty easier to follow. But we'll see that we can do either way. Let's see a system of equations where we need to multiply before eliminating a variable. So as you can see in this example, if we just add or subtract the equations the way they're written, nothing's going to cancel. 5 plus 3 and 5 minus 3, it won't cancel out. 2 plus negative 4 or 2 minus negative 4 also won't cancel out. So if we just add or subtract the way they're written right now, nothing will cancel out. But we can look here and see that if I multiply this 2 by 2, I'd have 4y and negative 4y, and those would be able to eliminate. So in order to get this to be a 4y and multiply by 2, I have to multiply the entire equation by 2. So I'm going to take this entire equation and multiply it by 2. So when I do that, I'm going to get a new equation that's 10x plus 4y equals 32. And it's a new equation, but it's equivalent to the one that we had before because we did the same thing to everything on both sides of the equal sign. Right? So it's a property of equality, and we're allowed to do that. In the second equation, we don't need to change it all. So we're going to get 3x minus 4y equals 20. And now I can see that I have a 4y and a minus 4y that if I add together will eliminate. So I'm going to have 10 plus 3, which is 13x, and the 4y plus negative 4y now cancels, and that equals 52. So I have 13x equals 52, so now with elimination, it looks like the ones before where I didn't have to multiply at all. So I multiplied this whole equation by 2, so that I now had a system of equations where one of the variables would eliminate when I add or subtract, in this case, adding, because again, they were different signs, positive 4 and negative 4. And now I can divide both sides by 13, because I'm trying to solve for x, it, x equals 4. Once I know the value of one variable, plug it into either of the two original equations. Always go back to your original equations. In case you made a mistake here multiplying them by 2, maybe you forgot to multiply one of the parts by 2, or you just made a mistake and error in there, we don't want to check our equation in a, or a solution in a wrong equation. So go back up here and check in one of your two original equations. I'm going to pick the first equation. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to do either one. They should come out the same, right? There's only one solution for this system. So I'm going to have 5 times 4 plus 2y equals 16. So that's going to be 20 plus 2y equals 16. Now I can subtract 20 on both sides because now I'm solving for that y. When I do that, I'm going to get 2y equals negative 4. And when I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get y equals negative 2. So my solution would be 4 comma negative 2. There's an x comma y. It's an ordered pair that would be the only ordered pair that solves both equations in that system. We could check it. We could plug a 4 back in for x, a negative 2 in for y into both equations, right? Plug them in here and here, then here and here. Make sure both equations are true. We know that that's an accurate solution. Here's another system of equations that we can solve by elimination after we multiply one of the two equations. As we see here, neither of these coefficients is going to cancel out by just adding or subtracting the way they're written. So I can look at this and figure out, what could I multiply one of the equations by to get the coefficients to be the same in front of one of the variables? Well, I can see here that this 2, if I multiply it by 3, will become a 6. So I can multiply everything by 3. Or what I'm going to do is multiply by negative 3, because then I'll have a negative 6, and I can add them to cancel out. 
Sometimes it's easier, so you don't make a mistake trying to subtract all the way across, but you could multiply by 3 and subtract them. That will work out the same as well. I like to multiply by the negative if I'm going to get them to be opposite signs then. So my first equation is going to stay the same. 6x plus 5y equals 19. Now of negative 6x minus 9y equals negative 15. Right, so when I multiplied by the negative, again, everything by negative 3, now I have a 6 and negative 6 that I can add together to get the cancel out. If you multiply by positive 3, you'd subtract the equations, and it would still work the same. But I like to do this where I can add them. So 6 plus negative 6 cancels out. 5 plus negative 9 is negative 4y equals 19 plus negative 15, which is 4. And now when I divide both sides there by negative 4, I get y equals negative 1. Okay? So y equals negative 1 that I can plug into either of the two original equations. I'm going to pick the second one just because the numbers are slightly smaller, but really it doesn't matter. And then negative 1 equals 5. All right, so I took this negative 1, y is negative 1, I plugged it in to the equation for y. And now I can solve the equation I left over and find out what x is. So it's going to be 2x minus 3 equals 5. I can add 3 to both sides. Get that to cancel out and get 2x equals 8. And now when I divide by 2 on both sides, I get x equals 4. So my final answer would be 4 comma negative 1. An ordered pair, written out as x comma y, that's my solution, again, that I got from elimination after first having to multiply one of the two equations. And I've said a couple times, we can multiply one or both equations. We're going to see an example here of multiplying both equations to get something to eliminate. So when we look at this system of equations, okay, we can't get the 5 and 2 to be the same coefficient by multiplying just one of the equations, right? There's, two, there's not 2 times something that would give me 5, a, a constant integer, okay? Or 3 and 4. There's nothing I can multiply one of these by so it'll be the same. But I could multiply both equations, okay? I could multiply this first equation by 2 and this by 5, and then it'd be 10 and 10. Or here I could get these to eliminate by multiplying by 3 and by 4. It doesn't matter which variable you get to cancel out. So you could do either one, okay? It really won't matter. I'm going to get the y's to cancel out. Okay? No particular reason, just whichever one you want to multiply by to get them to cancel. And so in order to do that, I'm going to multiply this first equation okay, by 3 and the second one by negative 4. Because again, I want to get those signs to be different so I can just add them to cancel. But you could also do positive 3 and positive 4. So here I'm going to have 15x minus 12y equals 30. I'm going to have negative 8x plus 12y equals 12. So again, now I'm going to be able to add the two equations together. Okay? If these were both negative 12 and negative 12, then I'd have to subtract them. So again, when they're the same signs, you subtract. When they're different signs here, negative or positive, I'm going to add. So I'm going to add these two equations together. I'm going to get 7x equals 42. Now I can divide both sides by 7 to get x equals 6. And now I go back to my original equation, and I plug in x equals 6. I'm going to pick the second equation, so I'm going to have 2 times 6 minus 3y equals negative 3. That's going to be 12 minus 3y equals negative 3. And then I can subtract 12 on both sides, and I'll get negative 3y equals negative 15. Paying attention to all these negative signs and all these different instances when you're multiplying by negatives, subtracting negatives, divided by negatives. Right, we got to be careful that we're not messing up with a ne uh, negative sign somewhere. So I'm going to get 5, excuse me, 6 comma 5. So I get 6 comma 5, x comma y. Okay. So 6 comma 5 would be my solution. And because there's so many places we can make a mistake, I had to multiply both equations here. There were some negative numbers I was working with in different instances. It would be a good idea. Take the 6 and the 5, plug it back in, and make sure it solves both equations. Take the 6 in here for the x, the 5 in here for the y, right? 5 times 6 is 30, minus 4 times 5 is 20. So I'd get 30 minus 20 is 10 equals 10. That would work. Now i got to check the other equation. So I'd have 12 minus 15. 12 minus 15 is negative 3 equals negative 3. So this works when I check it. It solves both equations. That's important. Make sure it's the solution for the entire system. And again, we want to look for how can I get one of these coefficients to cancel out by adding or subtracting. I might need to multiply one, or in this case, both equations first to get that to happen. Before we see one more example, 
A little break here. Trivial interlude, the only word in the English language that ends in the letters M-T. There's only one. Hard to believe. And it is dreamt. Dreamt is the only word in the English language ending in the letters M-T. All right, we've got another system of equations here. So if we're going to solve this system, we need to rearrange the terms first before we even look at what might eliminate. Okay, we look at this system. Here we have 3x minus 7y equals. Here we have the y, the x on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 5x from the second equation over to the left side so that I can get the x and the y both on the left side there. So I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. And then I'm going to have 3x minus 7y equals 5. First equation doesn't change. I'm going to get negative 5x plus 9y equals 5. And now I can look here and see what might I be able to do to get something to eliminate. Right? You can multiply the 7 and the 9. Right? You can multiply this by 9, this by 7. You can multiply this by 3 and by 5, so you can get the x's to cancel. I'm going to choose to do that just because it's smaller numbers to multiply by. So I'm going to take the first equation and multiply by 5, and the second one and multiply by 3, so that I'll have a 15x and negative 15x. So I'll write that down here below. So both these equations will come down here. When I distribute the 5 into the first equation, it's going to be 15x minus 35y equals 25. And the second equation will be negative 15x plus 27y equals 15. And now I can add these two equations together. 15 plus negative 15 will cancel out. Negative 35 plus 27 is negative 8y equals adding 25 and 15 gives me 40. When I divide by negative 8 on both sides, I get y equals negative 5. And I'll plug that into one of my two, again, original equations. Okay, I'm going to pick the first equation this time. So I'm going to get 3x minus 7 times negative 5 equals 5. And that's going to be 3x plus 35 equals 5. When I subtract 35 on both sides, I'm going to get 3x equals negative 30. And I could divide by 3 on both sides. I get x equals negative 10. So I've got my x and my y. So my final answer, negative 10 comma negative 5. X comma Y, ordered pair, that's my solution. And you could plug it into the two original equations, make sure that it solves them both. So rearranging terms, that's one of the first things we're going to look at. Whether we're going to multiply equations or not, when we're trying to use elimination, we need to get X's and Y's lined up. So I need to get the X's lined up, the Y's lined up, equal sign, constant terms. And then I want to look for what can I do to get one of those coefficients to be able to eliminate by addition or subtraction. Here I pick the x's, and if you wanted to, you could multiply this whole first equation by 9 and the whole second equation by 7, and you can get the y's to cancel. And you'd solve for x and plug that in to get y. It doesn't matter which variable you eliminate, you're going to want to eliminate one of them by, again, getting those coefficients to be the same. And I showed I like to do it where I can get them to be opposite signs. That way I'm adding the two equations together. But you can subtract them as well as we've seen with elimination. Eliminate a variable, solve, plug that back into solve for the other one. And don't forget to write that final answer as an ordered pair x comma y.